In this lesson, we are going to be talking about scoliosis. For whatever reason, on Comlex and usually on in-class exams, scoliosis is actually a pretty frequently tested topic. And it's interesting because it seems to me that this is one of those topics that medical students like to punt and don't really want to study, don't really want to learn, and are just going into tests thinking that they can reference information that they've heard once or twice in the past. But the thing that I'll say about scoliosis before we get started that's really worth keeping in the back of your mind is that it's not a big pool of information. There's only a little bit that you need to know. And relative to how small that pool of eligible information is that can be tested, it seems like it's a pretty high yield topic. So with that said, it's definitely worth your time to memorize and learn scoliosis. Let's get right into it. When we talk about scoliosis, there are four major categories of scoliosis. They include idiopathic, neuromuscular, traumatic, and pathological. The idiopathic type of scoliosis is the most common type of scoliosis. It's a very high yield fact, shows up on exams all the time. The neuromuscular type of scoliosis is the type of scoliosis that's associated with, as the name implies, neurological conditions. Just a few of those conditions include muscular dystrophy and Marfan syndrome. Traumatic scoliosis is what happens when somebody, as the name implies, experiences some traumatic event. And this is usually a car accident or some very high force or high stress injury that places its force vector on the spine. And in doing so, it just deforms the spine and creates scoliosis. Lastly, pathological is what happens when you have something like tumor compressing on the spine. That compression bends the spine one way or the other causing the scoliosis. So the takeaway from this slide is that idiopathic is the most common, but you can have other types of scoliosis as well. Now, as far as epidemiology goes, females are much more likely to be affected by scoliosis than males. And the peak onset is in adolescence. Can this occur later on in the teenage into early adulthood years? Yes, there are reports of that, but it is highly, highly likely to be diagnosed in adolescence. As I mentioned before, when we were briefly talking about different neuromuscular subtypes, scoliosis is associated with Marfan syndrome, Down syndrome, and neurofibromatosis, as well as muscular dystrophy. To diagnose scoliosis, you really want to get a radiograph, and in doing so, you'd be able to calculate what's known as the Cobb angle. And we'll talk more about what the Cobb angle means and, and the implications of that angle in a few slides. Now, what we need to do is talk about the naming convention for scoliosis, because this is a big issue for a lot of medical students. How do you name scoliosis depending on which side the spine is bending? And there are two major types or major names, I should say, of scoliosis. One is dextroscoliosis and the other is levoscoliosis. Dextroscoliosis refers to a right-sided scoliosis. So that's convexity right. And you can see that in the top image with the red arrow. Levoscoliosis refers to a left-sided scoliosis, and it's convex left, as shown in that bottom image with the blue arrow. Now, if you just remember, levo begins with an L, and it's left-sided, which also begins with an L, you should have no trouble remembering this. When we talk about scoliosis, in addition to naming it based on its convexity or based on right versus left-sided, we have to know whether it is structural or functional. These are somewhat vague sounding terms, but they're actually pretty easy in terms of what they mean. A structural scoliosis is a scoliosis or a curve that does not correct with side bending, whereas a functional scoliosis is a scoliosis or a curve that does indeed correct with side bending. So the takeaway here is that if you have a patient with scoliosis and as part of your treatment or even as part of your assessment, you introduce side bending and depending on which way you side bend them, if that curve gets better and the scoliosis becomes less severe or even disappears, that's a functional scoliosis. So keep that in the back of your mind because if they tell you this in a vignette that when side bending is introduced, the Cobb angle was 30 degrees and then it goes down to 15, you know you're dealing with a functional scoliosis. Now, the way to remember this is functional fixes. Functional fixes with side bending. Just keep those Fs together and you'll never forget this. Now, let's talk about the Cobb angle. This is probably the most high yield discussion in this entire lesson. The Cobb angle is the measurement by which the severity of scoliosis is determined. 
All right, so let, let's do an example. Let's say that this is your scoliosis. You can see that the spine has a deformity. To, to find and calculate the Cobb angle, the first thing you do is you draw two lines parallel to the topmost and bottommost portion of the curved section of the spine. So just where that spine is starting to deviate into its scoliotic component, you draw two parallel lines, which you see here in blue. Step two is you go to those parallel lines and you draw perpendicular lines at 90 degree angles. And you can see that here in orange. So step one, parallel lines across the top and bottom most portion of the curve. Step two, perpendicular lines to the first lines that you drew in step one. And now step three is to just calculate the angle where those two perpendicular lines intersect. And that angle, which is shown here in green, is the Cobb angle. And as you might imagine, if you can look at this image and sort of manipulate these lines in your head, if we were to introduce or, or put on the slide a much more severe scoliosis where there's a lot more bending in that curve, you could see that the blue lines would twist, the orange lines would twist, and that Cobb angle would get much larger. So a larger Cobb angle equals a more severe scoliosis, and a smaller Cobb angle equals more mild scoliosis. Now, we just alluded to this, but based on the severity of the Cobb angle, we can categorize how bad the scoliosis really is. And the three major categories are mild, moderate, and severe. Mild scoliosis is a Cobb angle up to 20 degrees. Now, a lot of literature says that your, your Cobb angle has to be at least 10 degrees to qualify for scoliosis. So in some texts, you'll see mild written as 10 to 20 degrees. And that just means that if you're nine degrees or less, you arguably aren't even dealing with scoliosis. But in terms of how you can simplify this for complex and for in-class exams, mild is up to 20 degrees. So anything 20 or less is mild scoliosis. Moderate scoliosis is a Cobb angle from 21 to 45 degrees. So now we're talking about that in-between stage. And then severe is 50 degrees or more. Now I know what some of you are thinking. You're looking at this slide and you're like, moderate goes up to 45, severe is 50 or more. What happens if I'm 46 to 49? And I would say that's an excellent question. And it's a question that primary literature has not addressed. But if you, for some reason, encounter a question where you have an angle of 46 to 49 degrees, I would probably just guess moderate because the literature seems to have a consensus that in order for the scoliosis to be severe, that Cobb angle has to be 50 or more degrees. So that in-between area is probably moderate, but it's something that needs further exploration. The only thing that you need to know besides this information is, is what you see in red. It's, it's really high yield. That with severe scoliosis, when you get up to 75 degrees or worse, so obviously now we're talking about terribly bad scoliosis, you get cardiovascular compromise. And as you can imagine, if you think, you know, look at the image here, as that spine bends out of control, now we're at 75 degrees, really bad, you can see that the ribs and the side bending in the thoracic vertebrae are certainly going to compromise cardiovascular function. And just locally pushing on the heart, restricting the lungs, it's, it should make perfect sense to you that with this severe of a scoliosis, you get cardiovascular compromise. So keep that in the back of your mind because on Comlex, you could definitely get a question where they give you a Cobb angle of 77 degrees and they ask you which of the following is likely and it, it may seem like just random possible choices, you know, pancreatitis, hepatitis, blah, 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 and you're going to want to pick the answer that is cardiovascular involvement. Now let's talk about treatment. Just like the severity, we categorize treatment based on mild, moderate, and severe. So if you have a mild scoliosis, the treatment's going to be just OMT. If you have a moderate scoliosis, it's going to be OMT plus bracing. And if you have a severe scoliosis, the treatment's going to be surgery. This should be somewhat easy to remember if you use my mnemonics here. For moderate, I say moderate, and the OB is OMT plus bracing. And severe surgery, both begin with the letter S, and that's pretty easy to remember. So that wraps up our conversation on scoliosis. Again, not a lot of information to know, but certainly important nonetheless.